Hello and welcome to Talk Fast TV, the home of YouTube content and podcasts for the hottest new bands around. Today I'm joined with The Clockworks from Ireland. Uh, we had a good little chat. If you like the video, give it a like, subscribe and share it with your mates. Other than that, enjoy guys. Cheers. Damien, um, the drummer Damien is in the middle of the countryside, like the real, real Irish countryside. So he's having a trouble connecting. But he is trying. Oh, okay, cool. Oh. All good. How you doing, Jack? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, so just a little uh, overview. I've just started a little kind of a, a little lockdown project, if you will. Um, I like to interview some new bands who I've got an interest in and kind of see them on the start of their journey. And then hopefully when they're... Well, the live world kicks off again. We can uh, interview at like venues and stuff like that, and yeah, get it going. Really, see people nice on that journey. Mm, great. Yeah. It's a good time to start that kind of thing. I think. I think there's a lot of bands, kind of. I wouldn't say sitting around, but there's a lot of bands with a lot of free time at the minute. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I'd say your reach can be a lot further. Yeah. These days, with everyone being at home and stuff. I've done a, I've done a couple of interviews so far. I've got a band from. Two bands from Australia, a couple from London, you guys from Ireland. You're Skinner so. Brothers, didn't you? Yeah, I done Skinner Brothers the other day as well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going all right so far. It's, uh, it's all new to me as well, I suppose, all the editing and all that kind of shit, but it's all good. Yeah, bit of crack, bit of fun. Should I get Damon, Damon Roughly in? Up. I don't know if he's here or not. He says he's here, he's but he's, uh, there we go, he's unmuted. One sec, one second. Hey. How are we? Boys. <laughs> How are things? Good. Nice connection, man. I know, right? Connection's looking well. I jinx it. Now. I like it. Yeah. In a second, I'll be like, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We had some uh, fun Zoom quizzes over lockdown. Damien's connection was interesting. Okay. Well, that's a good, <laughs> good excuse if you're uh, if you don't know the answer, just pretend blame on the connection, right? Yeah. Yes. No, that was a problem for me. <laughs> Sweet. So is that everyone in or? I haven't heard from Tom, so I guess so. He might, he might join, but if he doesn't, we can crack on anyway. Well, uh, yeah, pleasure having you guys on. Cot works. Um, so who we got with us today? We've got James. James is a singer, singer songwriter. Is that right? Yeah. And then, uh, what, what do you guys do, Sean and, and uh, Damien? So I play guitar. And I play drums. Nice one. And uh, well, let, let's go right back to the start. That's what I've kind of been doing so far with this. Um, like growing up, who do you remember? Like who really like turned you on with music and your early influences growing up? For me, uh, James got me into music. Well, got me into the, the music that we're into now. Okay. Um, I'd always been into music in other ways, but I suppose the way the clockworks ended up going, it was because James kind of steered me that direction. Mm. My and parents uh, got me into music. My yeah. parents used to play a lot of music in the house always. Um, from like David Bowie to Radiohead, uh, The Clash, Smiths, Funk kind of stuff, just lo loads and loads of stuff. So I sort of was surrounded by that since I was a toddler. Yeah, nice. In a nappy, running around, dancing to Funkadelic. <laughs> and what about yourself, Damien? Yeah, well, Sean, funnily enough, got me into music. So it was kind of like like handed down through through the band. Yeah, um, nice. You know, I, I like listen to a couple of the now that's what I call music albums but that was about it um and then Sean I see introduced me to some real bands that he had heard through James and I think the way it happened was Damien had an iPod but no means to put music on it or something like that you give me your iPod touch that you got for Christmas or something and uh, I just yeah. loaded it up with everything that the year previous James had got me into <laughs> okay nice nice yeah it's amazing though how you can not be interested in music at all someone who and it's like yeah. so damien's so into music now we all are but at some stage you can be completely not into it it feels yeah. crazy now because you look it at feels, someone yeah. and you're like 
how can you not be? But then you think back and there was a time where it mightn't have been, do you know? Yeah. I guess, yeah. Then again, I guess people who are really into football say the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's everywhere. Everyone plays football. You grow up playing football. How can you not love it when you're, when you're an adult? Yeah. Maybe. You just don't know, do you know? Like, you just... You don't, don't know, exactly. Yeah. You've not heard it. You've not experienced yeah. it yet. Once you do, that's when it happens. Mm. And was that... Do, do you guys remember when you first picked up, like, your instruments, like guitar and, and drums? I started playing guitar when I was um, 12, I think. Nice, young age, yeah. Um, I started playing guitar, yeah, then, and started writing words. Actually, I don't know, just always, always used to kind of just write, write stuff, so. Nice. And uh, what did you start writing? Oh, sorry, sorry. Was it like stories that you were writing when you were young, sorry. What's that? I just wondered, like, when did you, if you can actually, like, f remember a time that you actually start like were you in primary school doing stories or were you like yeah primary school doing stories secondary school just writing just like words on a page and realize what you're actually doing secondary school just the stories turned to words on a page and then i used to try and make them rhyme right because it was more fun to make the story rhyme so it was like a sort of like a story that would always rhyme and then nice. and then i don't know that sort of turned to i guess poems but i didn't think of them as poems they're just shorter lines mm. on a page if you had yeah. thought of them as poems you could have gone a completely different direction if you were like oh i'm a, I'm a poet do you know like it could totally yeah influence. never never taken it to music yeah mm. potentially yeah do a different college course any of that kind of stuff mm. and was there was there any specific like gigs or festivals that you went to when you were growing up and you thought like fuck I, that's what i want to do like that's that's like fucking oh, i want to be up there doing that like Sean probably went to a few. Yeah, well, I, I started playing um, drums when I was 10. I had done, like, guitar lessons when I was eight, or maybe piano when I was six, but I, they never clicked. And then I did one drum lesson, and I came home, and I remember my sister had a little toy kitchen, and I arranged it in the shape of a drum kit because I needed to have more drums that evening after my first lesson. I was, like, banging on this thing, being, like, need to play now, do you know, that kind of way. So I think that's where, for me, the kind of fascination with music like really kicked off at that stage so I started playing in like metal bands as was the thing to do in our small town that was just like five or six bands that like there was sort of an infrastructure in Ireland at the time for young metal bands I think it was like Blast Beat was it was called or something like some competition mm. and it really kind of made young people be a little bit more serious than I suppose just going out to your garage every Saturday. You know, you had you had a goal, I suppose. Yeah. Goal was playing this gig. And uh, yeah, just kind of progressed from there. Nice. And uh, and with the clockworks, um, but basically where are you all from County Galway? How did you all meet? And like, where did the name come from as well? So there's a few, a few thrown out there. Um, well, we all went to the same secondary school. Um, I met Sean when I was 12 because we were in the same year and I think Sean had known James um, just kind of friend of a friend and they became close so I met James through Sean um, so yeah we, we've known each other for years and like I only started playing drums when I was 16 or 17 um, because Sean and James had been kind of messing around together um, Sean had started guitar at that stage so they had kind of been writing a few songs and me and Sean were good friends and I kind of must have shown somewhat of an interest in his playing of drums enough for him to ask me to come out and play even though I couldn't but um yeah so we, we just kind of started playing together started going through some songs James had written and that James and Sean had had worked on together and um yeah and now it's like seven or eight years later and we've not stopped yeah tom is from limerick okay. but he came we met him in goa so he came to do to study in goa oh, nice. um so we met him there yeah we had some um we had uh, two bass players before tom 
um, who both just, just decided they were wanted to go in different directions, just like college or just life in general. So at some one stage we were living in Galway, we had no bass player, but we were as committed as we are now, you know, at the time. So it was kind of devastating each time th those bass players left. Mm. Um, so we were in this like weird interim where we were, we had really good songs, we'd making demos and we were, there was a few months where we just had no direction. Mm. And, uh, and we couldn't, we couldn't afford to record. Okay. Like go to a recording studio. Yeah, tough, yeah. But we also weren't getting any gigs. Didn't even know how to get gigs, really. Yeah. Um, but but we were completely the three of us like lived together, hundred percent focused in this like little house. It was a massive house, but we we occupied a little bit of it, uh, and we were just so focused on on getting there, but I had no idea how. And we didn't have a basis, so even if we had a gig, we'd have to try and like rope in someone to play bass with us. Yeah, so yeah, kind of mad. stalked the Galway musician pages trying to see if anyone was holding a bass like for some reason bass players at the time were really few and far between so came across tom's page and i was like oh i kind of half remembered him from being on like before or after us at some competition we did or something like that but well, i knew tom, i knew tom a little bit from col from college seeing him college i used to chat to him and he had said a story he told me a story because he was a guitarist and singer in a band and he told me a story of I think he told me a story of when he of it of uh, playing bass in a band years and years before, and it was like a passing comment that sort of stuck with me then when we were yeah looking at pages of bass players everywhere. Yeah. So I'm like, I went on his uh, really... Facebook page and scrolled back like eight profile photos because we weren't friends on Facebook, so I only had the profile, and it was like guitar, guitar, like him with a girl, <laughs> guitar. And then eventually it was like him with short hair, which we only knew him to have long hair, him with short hair holding a bass. And I was like, he plays bass. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. Bring him up. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Got him out to a rehearsal in the local college, the NUIG, where we had a room. It was the only place that we could rehearse for free. So you had to book it up in advance. And loads of bands were trying to use him. Hmm. We actually had to carry all of our gear in Tesco shopping trolleys across the city because we no car. It was really like, it's kind of like desperate, but kind of like romantically desperate in hindsight. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, but I didn't really take much notice of that at the time, but that was a bit mad when you think back about it. You know, it was just kind of what we had to do at the time. So you get on with it, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, we were looking at halfway across the city every yeah. two days or three days. We had uh, played with a couple of bass players, like really, really like short sessions where instantly we were like, they're not going to, cut it basically mm. um for one reason or another and then we got tom in and he just started playing i had sent him the demos like two days before and i was like oh if he if he's learned one of them he'll be better than the other guys yeah. um and he came in and he played like five six or seven songs perfectly straight through kind of really calmly and just didn't really say much and the quietly like the three of us who had been so desperate for so long were like oh shit like <laughs> he's yeah. good and uh we all went home and then we had a gig, it was a college like graduation that we were playing at with the, the previous bass player. He just came to fill in for a night mm. and uh, our sound engineer, Carl, bumped into Tom and was like, oh, I hear you're the new bass player. Tom kind of like, <laughs> what's that now? Like, apparently we'd forgotten to tell him how brilliant he was. <laughs> and we were like already moving him into the house and he didn't even know. <laughs> nice. And um, do you remember your your first gig as this uh, this current lineup, as the latest lineup? It was in the was Roshan, it? was it? Was it a Kitog? Yeah, I yeah, think it was a Kitog. Yeah. gigs. So it was our local venue in Galway. Hmm. Nice. And uh, mm. so I see um, over the last year or so. Well, you've, I know you've um, linked up linked up with Creation Twenty Three, and uh, so how, how did that all come about? You guys and Alan McGee. Um, I sent him an Instagram message. Uh, yeah, um, I, read that, I actually read that in an interview, but yeah. The short answer, yeah. Like we'd been, um, James bought his book two years previous. We have a great photo in our house in Galway. Mm. Um, I don't know if you saw it, it was on our Instagram there, but it, it really sets the scene for wh what we were living like. But um, his book was sitting there on the table, just just being read by, by us. Uh, 
so James sent me a link to an NME article that he did mm-hmm. uh, an interview in where he said the, the best way to get in touch these days is Instagram. And obviously we had already been in touch on Instagram or tried to, we sent him messages like a year previous or mm-hmm. every few weeks or few months we'd try him again and delete the messages if it was the first time and try him again. And, yeah, yeah. um, you know, I'm sure everyone knows that story, but like, and was it true then one morning on the way, on sorry, the way to work, yeah, the message just got through. Uh, so was it true? You, uh, did you describe yourselves as like a cross between the streets and the Sex Pistols? Is that right? Or it, I was something along the lines of a punk version of the streets. That's what he says now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, we were trying to f- find a narrative for ourselves at the time. So every message you try out something new, but uh. <clears throat> When we were like, fuck, it's like kind of a punk version of the streets. We we're like, that's kind of cool and mm. kind of true. Like when you hear it at the time, we'd like bills and pills. Like it's kind of like Mike Skinner style lyrics and then this kind of like punk music backing it up. So it wasn't like a million miles off, but he, he hooked onto that anyway. Mm. And, uh, he said it was interesting at very least, but they'll probably probably be rubbish. Let me check it out to see if they're rubbish. And then obviously he, he really he was really into it. That's something there, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And uh, it's just a quick random one. I've, I've obviously listened to Bills and Pills. All, all, all the tunes are on Spotify I've been listening to, but uh, Stranded and Stansted, um, is that a, 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 is there a story behind that one? Is there, have, you, have you actually been over in England, missed, like, missed a flight to, to your next uh, show or anything like that over there? Or? We, actually, we actually, so before we moved to London, we flew over a couple of times to play mm-hmm. sort of spot gigs um maybe five or six times um because we kind of had the intention of moving over so we thought it'd probably be a good idea to sort of try and lay a little bit of groundwork if we could um and we had terrible luck for a few months yeah there was one time our flight like there was like inches maybe feet of snow i don't know if you remember it 2018 it just like snowed like ridiculously on the day we were flying so like the fight got cancelled. Um, there was another incident where something else happened. And then we got over to London. So we had a few flights cancelled altogether um, before we even set, set off to Ireland, or to England. And then we got to England and on the way back, there was another sort of weather disaster. And we, yeah, we, got, we did actually get stranded in Santa. Fuck. Yeah. And I remember thinking, so... Uh, we were panicking. I th- I th- we were trying to book flights for the next day because obviously everyone in there was doing the same thing. So everyone was booking the next flights. So we were there with like two phones, iPods, whatever else. Like if someone had a laptop. We were there like trying to book a million flights. All of our phones were dying for some reason. All, every, everything yeah. was dying, yeah. The signal was terrible because the weather was awful. Um, it was it was really panicked. I think we were in a bit of a panic. And we all had like, I know I for one had worked the next morning. Um, so I booked off a few days to try and to go to the gig, to go to London. So I sort of had to be in the next day and we just couldn't get the flights, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I do remember amidst all the panic, just this tiny little like seed, this sort of like light at the back of my head being like, there's a song in this. <laughs> I f- there's a song here somewhere. Nice. You know, cause the feeling was so real. It was such a, that there was about 2,000 people standing in a room all panicking about the same thing. Mm. I thought, geez, that's, that's a real feeling. Yeah. Um, and that, that into words. That's one thing I've noticed with a lot of your songs. They've got real um, real punchy like song titles. Like, they gr- really grab the listener, I suppose. Uh, like Enough is, enough, enough is uh, Never Enough. Um, can I Speak to a Manager? They, they really grab your attention straight away, the song titles. So you like, I don't know. It, it, for me, anyway, as a listener, definitely just grab pulls me in straight away, and then you, then you're hooked from the first, first seconds, really. Um, That's good to know. Good to know, because I think we find it quite hard to title songs as well, don't we? Well, I think more often than not, we don't actually think about it, and it just becomes a name, unless it's a bad name that we have to change, or like it's so shorthand that it doesn't make sense. Then we have to title it. But other than that, it's been like, I think it's also um, it's it's just a testament to. To James is writing as well because it's like we just pick a line out of the song one that encapsulates the whole song and and it's a catchy title because it's a good line yeah it's worked out so far like bills and pills we were like what, what would we call it 
uh, you know, it's like the bills keep coming, the pit, yeah, you know, the line. So it's like, can't yeah. call it that. It's so like bills and pills. It's a bit on the nose, but I kind of like it. <laughs> it works. Yeah. So guys, uh, obviously your your plans. Well, you, I know you've been releasing music this year, but I suppose your your plans for touring and stuff's been absolutely slaughtered in a way, um, as with every other band in the world. Uh, what's your, if you could wave like a magic wand for next year, what would be your be your plans really as a band? Hopefully by summer, things will be back relatively, like maybe we're, we're hearing talks that like summer, the festivals might be moved to late summer and then mm. small gigs might be back by the end of the year. Like that's all going really well, I think so. I think as soon as things are back, we're going to be really, we're going to be everywhere. I think playing absolutely everywhere in the world, not only in the UK or Europe, but like we're kind of priming ourselves now for a hectic 2020, late 21, yeah, 22. Yeah, as soon as we can, we will. Joe, you know, it's like we're not, we're just waiting to be allowed to gig. Yes, that's, that's all. You know, we're ready to to go again. Um. So whenever that happens, we'll be doing it. Sweet. And would you... Uh... Sorry, James, sorry. Sorry, I just agreed. Sorry, I was just agreeing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and would you look to be... Uh, obviously, uh, I can imagine you, you like your own uh, your own tour, but would you would, would you be interested in, like, obviously supporting some one of the bigger names out there, definitely? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Not Sean. Sure. Not me. Can't do it. <laughs> we'll have to get a session guitarist in, but uh, yeah, <laughs> good lad. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, the stadium world tour. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> and what's your ultimate dreams for the band? I mean, you can be as corny as you like with this, or you can be as down to earth, however you like. Like, or I wouldn't even say it's corny. You know, if you've got big dreams, then fucking say it. Like, who cares? Like, probably bring yeah. about world peace. Um, <laughs> not to be not to be corny, but yeah, world peace. Good lad. I want to uh, for that. develop my idea for a uh, corn on the cob empire. <laughs> Not to be corn. Yeah. Is that too corny? <laughs> I'm down with that. That's cool. We can get that into Maybe it's so corny. It, maybe it's so <laughs> corny. It goes back to being okay again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that and Glastonbury Pyramid Stage. That'll do the job. Yeah. Great. Just launching out corn on the cob into the crowd. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's American. Oh, right there. One of those, like, That's our gimmick. Like a T-shirt. That's our gimmick to get there. <laughs> That's logo. You get a bit like the uh, Stone Roses lemon. You just get a clockwork's corn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Horrible. Doesn't look as good. No good. meaning. No meaning whatsoever. Yeah. Oh shucks. Oh, fuck yeah. And what about yourself, James? Where whereabouts would you like to? Uh, what's your ultimate dreams for the band? No, to be honest, we've always said Glastonbury headline. Yeah. Pyramid stage. Oh. That actually has always. That's, that's sort of been this. This. We've never been to Glastonbury, but we've sort of always dreamed of that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that pyramid stage Saturday night. I've always liked that's the idea of. The... As a band, I mean, like. I've never been to Glastonbury either, but if I was in a band, I'd always be like, I don't want to go until I, I get asked to play it. I, I think that was like... Yeah. We sort of, there. yeah, we... I don't know if we... Uh, have we stuck to this? But about two years ago, Sean said, let's not go to any festivals unless we're playing them. Nice. And we haven't so been to a festival. That's out. No, we have, we've, uh, <laughs> we've been to a few. It's, it's a good excuse for... Um not being able to afford it as well yeah it makes us makes us feel a bit better to say like ah oh, no we're, we're just waiting until we play it at this stage after playing a couple of festivals where tickets have been two or three hundred euro or pound or whatever it's like oh i can't spend 200 pounds on a festival it's like just book us to play yeah, it then we go <laughs> if they're letting schmucks like us play it then like <laughs> why would we spend money on that yeah that's two or three hundred quid's worth of uh Calling the cob, isn't it? So there you go. That <laughs> money well spent. <laughs> one day, one day. Hey lads, so I've got uh, some. Yeah. Oh, sorry, James. Carry on, man. Sorry. No, no, no. I was just disagreeing again. 
Just riffing. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I, I'm so sorry about cutting in and stuff like that. It's when it's a four way call, you just always sorry. Yeah. I think just go for it, just smash in on top. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. just completely over talk over the lead singer. Who gives a fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, offense no second. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I've wrote some uh, quick fire questions down. <clears throat> okay. I, don't, I don't really know how they, they work on here, but fuck it, we'll go with it anyway. Um, Should we take turns? Should we organize this before we before we go? We oh, just right. take turns with them. Yeah. All right. James can go first. Damien, you go first. I'll go uh, first. Uh, Sean, we'll split the difference. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sean. Sean's yeah. first, and then we'll go with James second, and there we go. Damien nice. third. Okay, okay, so beautiful. At home or on the road? On the road. Okay. Second one, I've got up north or down south. Ooh. Down. Oh, hey, that's a. <laughs> that one's tough. That one's a tough one. I feel like you you set us up there, because that home or on the road was was a nice one. <laughs> up north, down south. Now you're right. Now you're, now you're, now you're getting divisive. James is like, they're called quick, quick fire, quick fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot I'm talking to an Irish band as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, like like a, it. it's a way different thing here. <laughs> um, Next question, please. Yeah, okay. Well, an easier one Oasis or Blur? Oh, Oasis oh, right now. Why, Oasis. Why, why one or the other? They're both amazing. <laughs> I would I, I would have gone into that, but I just thought because I I didn't I made a balls of the quick fire a second ago. I thought I'm just gonna go <laughs> Oasis. It's fine. Yeah. On the beers or on the wine? Is it my one? Yeah. Yeah. Beers. The every beers. day of the week. Well, not every day. I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Good lad. Uh, arenas or festivals? Oh, oh, that's tough. Uh, I'll say arenas because we can do them all year round. That's a good answer. Jeez. Nice. Um, I don't, I don't know who it is now, but Liam or Noel? No. No. Okay, sweet. Uh, next up, vodka or whiskey? Whiskey. And then, Easy. So um, why am I getting all the alcoholic ones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only getting like booze. I'll, I'll, I'll them, but... And he does love beer and whiskey. There's yeah, two true. drinks he does love as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Next up, John Lennon or Bob Marley? Uh, whoa, that's. Uh, I never heard those compared. Yeah. If you could just uh, I'd say yeah. Bob Marley. Oh, and then this one can go for this one can go for all of you guys. What's your go-to karaoke song? Sweet Caroline. True. <laughs> um, mine is uh, Bonnie Tyler. Total Eclipse of the Heart. Big true. After a few whiskeys and beers. <laughs> not even. Uh, not even. I'll be practicing. <laughs> and Sean, uh, I'll say. Um, Buffalo Soldier, Bob Marley. Fair, fair. Probably would be as well. Come on then. Give us a rendition. <laughs> mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been a it's been a pleasure having you on for a call. I appreciate your time today. You got any uh, any message at all for probably the ten listeners that will listen to my channel and yeah, who would who want to reach out and listen to your music maybe? No. Nope. <laughs> um, Tell your friends on, to listen to keep this. Keep on, you know? to keep on trucking. To this. Keep on trucking. Because it deserves more than ten. You're a, you're a good interviewer. I appreciate that. That's nice words. Yeah, yeah. This was this was really good. Nice one. Well, hopefully you're back on the road soon enough, and then I can come and come and grab you at one of these arenas, festivals, or wherever, and we'll have another little chat. Definitely. Yeah, we'll have a beer Keep and a whiskey. Touch. Sweet ass. Thanks, Jack. Guys, have a good Christmas. Touch, Stay Jack. safe. Thanks for that. Cheers.
Take care, Bye, bye, bye. Bye.